Welcome back to Entertainment News. We're joined by Miss Chapman, who was reviewing a picture book called Grandad's Gifts. Miss Chapman, what can you tell us about the context of the book? Grandad's Gifts was first published in 1994 by famous Australian author Paul Jennings. According to the author's website, his book sales now total over 8.9 million and have been translated into 18 languages worldwide. The artistic illustrations within the picture book were created by Peter Goodthorpe. Penguin Books Australia have identified Goodthorpe as one of Australia's most versatile and skillful illustrators. Together, Paul and Peter have enabled audiences to enjoy Grandad's gifts by giving equal precedence to language and imagery within the text. The literary theme evident within the book is if you tell a child not to touch something, they will be more inclined to do the opposite. Miss Chapman, some of our viewers are wondering, what can you tell us about the text description of the picture book? Through the protagonist, Shane's first person narration, we learn that he has moved into his grandparents' old house with his mum and dad. The story opens with Shane's dad forbidding him to open the mysterious cupboard located in his bedroom. Goodthorpe's illustrations support the strong command, with Shane's dad using explicit hand gestures to communicate his message. Shane's body language immediately suggests that he will be defiant, with his hands on his hips. Staring at the cupboard, we notice a strange-like fox symbol within the wood on the door. This spectacular use of imagery draws the audience in and makes everybody curious about what lies behind the forbidden cupboard. The literary theme is enhanced when we realise that Shane has engaged almost all of his senses into figuring out what lies in the cupboard without breaking his dad's trust. Jennings writes that Shane peers through the keyhole, shakes the door handle, smells the dusty, musty scent and can hear a gentle voice lapping like waves against his head. Shane, Shane, Shane. The use of this simile highlights the constant cravings that Shane has to unlock the forbidden cupboard. Waves lapping against the beach are continual, just like his will to open the mysterious door. The illustration to accompany this scene is of Shane seen through the key keyhole, which suggests that something is watching him, making the framing of this particular scene the dominant component of this page's composition. The moon shines in Shane's room and the diagonal vector connects the protagonist to wooden fox symbol in a way that it becomes obvious that Shane is worried about what lies within the cupboard. After Shane opened the loose wooden floorboard, Jennings used an oxymoron to highlight the importance of the key that glinted dully. The low angle shot that accompanies these words symbolises Shane's newfound power. Shocked upon opening the cupboard, the demand of the illustration makes the audience feel like they are positioned inside. Shane has officially rebelled against his dad and couldn't resist opening the cupboard door. Unfortunate turn of events, Shane's father cuts down the tree which was vital to what lies in the cupboard. Shane uses resources from a different tree which proved to be Grandad's gift. Whilst Jennings writes that Shane feels happy in a way that he had never been happy before, the illustration from a high angle shot shows the apologetic guilt Shane feels for entering the forbidden cupboard. Tell us about your final judgement of Grandad's gifts. The twist at the end is epic and makes the audience view the cupboard differently. The author and illustrator cleverly communicated the literary theme that if you tell a child not to touch something, they will be more inclined to do the opposite. Shane felt happiness and culpability once the cupboard was empty, yet he successfully hid his secret mission from his family. This picture book is definitely highly recommended for everybody. Thanks very much.